Hi, so here is a new video on my series about GNU slash Linux and PCI PCI Express. In this series of videos I've already showed you how to access the various address spaces available on PCI Express. So we already successfully accessed the configuration space and also the memory space. But there is one address space missing. So in today's video I will show you how to access the I.O. ports of a PCI or PCI Express device from a user space application on GNU slash Linux. So let's start. But first let's take a look at my system. So I'm running a quite old PC here on which I've put Debian 12 on it. So yeah, this processor is a little bit outdated, but hey, it's already a 64-bit single-core processor and it's good enough for my video today. So let's take a look at the PCI bus. So in today's video, we will write a user space application to control the I.O. ports of a parallel port. And the device I want to use is this here, the slot, uh, the bus slot and function number is 480. Yeah. But before we take a closer look to this device, let's check these Ethernet controllers to refresh your memory a little bit about the available address spaces. Yeah, maybe let's do it this way. Okay, so here this Ethernet controller has two bars. Behind a bar you can have I.O. ports available or real memory available. So I.O. ports are more like hardware registers which you can access and Memory can be even real RAM memory, or it can also be memory mapped IOs. That's basically the two possibilities. And in the base address re registers, you can find the address at which your host PC has mapped the address space of the PCI devices. So for example, for bar zero here, we are using the IO ports at address B800 hexadecimal and for bar 1 we are using the memory address FAAFF000 which is 265 bytes in size and the I.O. ports are also 256 bytes in size. Over the first bit of the base address registers you can see which type of memory is available. So for example, let's read out from offset 16 or 10 hexadecimal and I want to read along, so I want to read the whole base address register and here you can see the first bit here is set. So basically it's this address but this bit is set. And if bit 1 is hardwired to 1, we know behind this bar we have IO ports available. In case the first bit is hardwired to 0, which is the case here with bar 1, which is the memory here. We know behind this bar is memory space available. Okay, but we don't want to mess around with this Ethernet controller. Instead, let's take a look at my parallel ports card. So this is my PCI to parallel port adapter and you can see here all six bars are used and after or behind each bar is I.O. ports or are I.O. ports available and I've connected this soldered board here to my parallel port and here I can read in the state of the step switches here and I control the seven segment display over the parallel port. So in order to use the parallel port we have to access the um, yeah, addresses or, or the I.O. ports at address C880. So but how um, depending on your PCI configuration and how many cards you have plugged into it, this address can change. So we have to read in the value of bar 0 basically. And how can we do this? Well under sys bus PCI devices, every PCI device has its own folder and if we select or if we pass in here the bus slot and function number of our parallel port adapter then we can see various files in here and here we have a file called config and if we 
open this file and read from it, we can access the configuration space of our device and if we read from offset 10, we will get the address of bar 0. And that's exactly what we want to do now. Okay, so let me create a small um, user space application. I will call it control parallel port .c. And the first thing I will do is I will include some headers. So I will, I will include standard io.h, standard lib.h, unistd.h, then I will include sys slash io.h, which I need for accessing io ports, and the last one is function control here. Let me create a C or a main app, a main function. And I want to pass arguments to this main function. So how do I want to use this application? So the first argument will be the bus, slot and function number of my PCI device. The second one will be R, if you want to read in the state of the yeah, dip switches here, or a W if you want to write the value to the seven segment display. And if you want to do a uh, write, we will have a third argument, and this third argument um, has a value we want to write out to yeah, the seven segment display. So first I will need some variables. First one is my file descriptor. The second one is a string where I will store in the path and the name of my PCI config. And a byte for storing the value I want to write out. And the last argument is the IO address to which I want to, to read or write from, which I will read from the configuration space of my PCI device. Then the next thing I have to do is I have to check the numbers of arguments. And in case it's not equal to three and it's not equal to four, we've passed in an invalid amount of arguments and I will print out the usage of my application. Yeah, this is how we will use it. And here, of course, I forgot to mention, yeah, the name of my application is stored in the first, in, in argument zero here. Okay, and then I will use printf to create the path to my PCI config space. So I can find this under sys bus PCI devices 0, 0, 0, 0. And then I will pass in the sl uh, bus slot and function number of my device here. And these are stored in the first argument of the function. Then I will use or I will open this file and I will open it with read only permissions because I only want to read from this config space. In case this returns something smaller than zero, open failed and I will print out the error open PCI config with its error code and I will return a one. Okay. And in case um, the opening worked, I will then read the value from offset 10. So I will read the bar one. Therefore, I will use the p read function. So the p read or p write function read from or write to a file descriptor at a given offset. So basically the first three arguments are the same like for normal read, but the last one is the offset from which I want to read. Cool. So let's do this. So I want to read from my file descriptor. I want to read into my IO address and I want to read four bytes and I want to read from the offset 16 or 10 hexadecimal. And in case this returns a value which is not equal to four, something went wrong. 
I never print, I use, will use um, p error to print out the error message. I will close my file descriptor and I will return a one here. And in case it did work, I can close my file because I have now the IO address stored here in my IO address variable. Okay, and the next thing I will do is I will do some checks. So in case IO address is equal to zero, bar zero is not used at this device. So I will print out this error message here and I will return a one here. And another thing which could happen is in case IO address and one is equals to zero. In this case bar one is used, but there is memory space behind it. So I will print out this message here. And I will also return a one. And the last thing is, now I have to adjust my address. So I have to clear the first bit here because this is hardwired on IO ports. So I can do this, yeah, basically with this here. And then let's print out IO ports at, and let's print out IO address here. Okay. And now the next thing I need is I need IO perm. So with IO perm, I can set the port input output permissions. And IO perm has the following arguments. So for using it, I need sys slash IO.h, which I included before. So re the return value is an integer. The first argument is the IO ports or the IO port address for which I want to set the permission. The second one is the number of the IO ports. So in my case, I will use the first three bytes. And the last one are the permissions. So if this is non-zero, then the permissions will be set, basically. And yeah, this can return a zero on success or an error code else. So in case um, IO perm, IO address, or I only need the first two bytes basically, so just use them. I will just use them. If it's not equal to zero, then I will print out p error perm and I will return a one here. And at the end of the program, I will reset the IO permissions. So I will set them to zero again. Okay. And now I'll need a switch case. So the second argument is an R for read or a W for write. So in case I want to read, then I will use the function in B to read one byte from an IO port. In B IO address plus one. So IO address plus one is where the input registers of a parallel port can be found. And I will break from my switch case. In case the we argument two byte zero is a W, then we will do a write. But the first thing I need is I have to get the value I want to write. So I will use string to L to convert my string to a long and here I'm casting it to an unsigned char. So arg v free null. So yeah, and then I will use out b to write a byte out to an IO port. So the first argument here is the value I want to write out. The second one is the address at which I want to write it out and this is the IO address. And then I will do a break. And in case the first letter here is not an R and not an W, I will do nothing here. Okay. Yeah, so that should be it. Let me try to test it. Okay, I didn't make any error. 
So let's try this application. So here I'm getting the usage. Let's check which PCI device I want to use. Here I want to use this one here. And let's say first we will do a read. I will set all the step switches to zero. Give me a second. Okay, done. And now let's do a read. So here it found out the correct address for reading. And then it read this value. If I change some switches, this value will change. Yeah. And now let's try writing. So let's write a seven out. Yeah, now we have a seven displayed here. Or I think 107. Yes, okay, here I have a little. Yeah, or nine. Yeah, nine is a five, perfect. And if I write a zero out, it's empty again. And now, just to be curious if the detecting of IO ports is working here on my system, let's try it with a device which has a memory bar at um, offset or at bar zero. So here I will use my um, GPU basically. And we see this has a memory space behind bar zero. So let's pass this bus slot and function number in here and let's do a read. And now we're getting the warning message bar zero of this device's memory space and not IO ports, so I won't read. Cool. Okay, perfect. So that's how to yeah access IO ports of a PCI or PCI Express device from a Linux user space C application. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee and buymeacoffee.com slash runners for Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.